What is going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we have a brand new Treasure Map Sugo Fest that has been data downloaded into the game and with this Sugo Fest we have the release of yet another Treasure Map Sugo Fest exclusive character. Now personally I, I, I'm kind of sick of all these Treasure Map legends coming out and I feel like it is, it is really hard for us global players right now because we've had this situation of the merge or sync where we've had so many different legends release and i think uh, one of my lines members poppy he literally said that we've had like nearly 20 legends released in the past two months like that is just absurd right uh, so I, I can definitely understand where people are coming from when they're getting overwhelmed or just getting sick of all these legend releases don't worry i am definitely with you on that one and i really really do hate it but remember moving forward things are going back to some sort of normality okay so you have to keep that in mind you know the past couple of months have been just completely crazy so hopefully we don't see too many more legends releasing so consecutively right Anyways, let's talk about this brand new Sugo Fest because this is for the Treasure Map Sugo Fest, which is starting on the 11th of February, 1900 PST time for part one. Part two is going to be on February 12th and part three is going to be on the 13th. And then I believe the actual, it's weird because I think the actual Treasure Map itself starts on the 16th. So there's so much time between part three and the beginning of the event it's pretty crazy i don't know why they do it i'm not a big fan of it but it, at least it gives you a lot of time to prepare your teams make sure you do get your teams actually prepared so of course the rate boosted characters will be changing with each part part one is croc you've got dog storm on part two and cat viper on part three but obviously the main headline unit for this sugo fest is the brand new legend which is going to be carrot and wanda which we will be talking about in just a moment before we do that i want to jump into the actual breakdown of the treasure map sugo fest We've got a discounted multi on the first, a legend or rate boosted step, everybody's favorite on the second, and then a guaranteed recommended character on the third. That's actually pretty good because when you have a look at this, a recommended unit is one of these banner units guaranteed. Meaning if you get a gold, it's one of the two TM boosters. If you get a red, I mean, the red quality is amazing. I mean, Bond Clay, Crocodile, and then the brand new Carrot and Wanda. And then on part two, obviously, it's the exact same with the exact same steps. Guaranteed recommended character, meaning that if you get a red, Dog Storm is a character you can get. And then alternatively, part three is with Cat Viper. So already, the first three steps look okay to me. Then another trash step on the fourth, but then a guaranteed legend on the fifth. And then you've got another trash step, then a new character on the seventh, meaning that it can be the brand new Pedro, Peckham's, or the Wander and Carrot. Um, so that's cool. And then you've got another trash step, another trash step, and then another new character on the 10th. And of course, if you go all the way to the 25th multi, you're guaranteed to get Carrot and Wanda. Do not recommend doing that. In my opinion, I'm not the biggest fan of this unit, at least in regular play. We'll go through what this unit does in just a moment. But there you go. That's the breakdown of the Sugo Fest. It just seems like pretty typical. And I think if you're the type of player that likes to spend on Treasure Map Sugo Fests, I think, you know, any more than maybe even seven multis, any more than seven really doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, I think, you know, most people would probably go to three. Personally, I think we're going to go to five and just stop there um, and hopefully at least have you know, some decent boosters by that point. So that's probably what I'll be doing for this Treasure Map Sugo Fest. So I guess you guys are very excited to hear about what these new units do. So let's go ahead and have a look at what they actually do. So the first unit we're going to have a look at is this Peckham's character. This is one of the two Treasure Map Rare Recruit boosters. And remember, because this is debuting with a legend on the Treasure Map, the Peckham's and the Pedro Rare Recruits will be available in future Treasure Map Sugo Fests. So that's at least good to know. So with Peckham's, he's a strength Fighter Slasher, nothing special there. Captain Ability is a three times boost to Slashers, 1.2 health. Heals the crew for 800 at the end of the turn. Very specific there. Don't know about that one. But the Special Ability will completely remove Bind from one chosen character, adjacent slots into matching, five turns of damage threshold and damage reduction, so threshold and rainbow shield, and a three times chain lock for one turn. This is a good special. This is a special that will definitely see play on lots of different teams moving forward. Um, this is going to be good for garb challenges as well. Uh, this is a good special. This is a pretty, pretty good unit. Um, he also makes strength slots matching to fighter and slasher, also really nice crewmate ability, and removes five turns of blindness, remove SFX. That's going to be annoying. I can, all, I can pretty much guarantee it the fact that, you know, blind this will be in this treasure map at some point that's going to be very infuriating to deal with the support of peckham's attaches to sanji dogstorm cat viper pedro and carrot and if you're inflicted with decreased chain multiplier he gives you a 2.5 chain lock at the start of the next turn pretty good 
support effect that's just that's just a generically good effect that's not bad at all and unfortunately no rumble effects but look at that sprite that sprite's kind of crazy okie dokie well that's peckham's he seems pretty good i'm i'm perfectly okay with this unit no issues with this unit whatsoever looks pretty solid the next one though is going to be pedro pedro being a quick slasher cerebral with a captain ability of three times attack to slasher and cerebral 1.2 health and tandem slots are changed into bomb slots um sure all right yeah okay sure all right let's have a look at his special so he binds himself for 50 turns but then reduces three turns of paralysis despair and attack down now look three turn removal in 2022 for a treasure map rare recruit nah but he does, it, he's, he does that, but then he also deals 200 times his attack in typeless damage to all enemies, ignoring all defensive effects and defense. <laughs> Not good enough, honestly. He changes all slots into matching, that's useful. Doubles the color affinity of slasher and cerebral characters for three turns. And if you have one or more bomb slots on your crew, he boosts the crew's attack and slot effects by 1.75 times for one turn. So realistically, if you somehow have a bomb slot, he can give you two times affinity, 1.75 attack, 1.75 orbs, all in his one special. Pretty strange. I don't know, man. It's, it's pretty, pretty bizarre, honestly. I don't think this guy's that good. I don't know in how many situations this guy's going to see play. He just doesn't seem very useful. He makes tandem decks and recovery slots matching for himself. And bomb slots have matching slot effects for the whole team. That's actually kind of cool. Very unique. You don't see that too often. So it's interesting that this Pedro has that. Okay, and the support effect attaching to Chopper, Brook, Dog, Cat, and Carrot. And 13% base attack boost and boost attack against <sighs> Perispero by 1.5 times. That is so niche. Like, how many, how many Perispero bosses are there in the game? I can't even think of that many, aside from the treasure map that's about to occur. That sucks. That's a bad support effect. That's a really bad support effect. Man, they missed the mark heavy on this Pedro. Uh, even the, the utility not even being five turns is awful. And he binds himself as well. I mean, I get, oh yeah, you just used the, the new Peckhams to unbind him. But it's just bad. It's just bad. I don't know what to say. This unit is not very good. Uh, yeah, not very good at all, unfortunately. But now let's talk about the Sugo Fest exclusive character of the batch, which is the Carrot and Wanda. And it is indeed a dual unit. So let's start things by looking at Carrot, who is a quick slasher cerebral. Another quick legend Carrot, by the way. Captain ability of Carrot is going to give minus two cooldown at the start of the quest, boosting the attack of fighter, slasher, striker, cerebral, and powerhouse characters. So you got five classes there by 2.2 times and if you have a character that has both of those classes then they get a 4.84 times boost and it also makes quick slots matching and reduces the entire team's special charge time by two turns at the start of the third battle that's pretty cool i mean obviously like ultra speed farming captain two turns and then an additional two turns on the third stage and um, this is also pretty cool man i like i kind of like that but at the same time, the, the way that you have to build this character with, with those specific classes of Fighter, Slasher, Striker, Cerebral, and Powerhouse, I don't know how useful that's going to be. Obviously, if you're able to build a, you know, a really optimal team for that, it's going to be really good, and it's going to be very, very fast. But it's a little too niche. And remember, no HP, no um, you know healing mechanics, no damage reduction. And remember that with the Captain ability, it does not bypass defensive effects with the captain ability so that is obviously a huge downside to this character's captain ability comparatively to dog cat and even v1 carrot right so take it as you will let's have a look at wanda though wanda is the exact same minus two cooldown fighter slash striker cerebral powerhouse same attack boost and then deck slots are matching it's the exact same captain ability just one makes decks matching one makes quick matching so there you go both Wander and Carrot, very interesting uh, captain abilities there. But now let's go ahead and have a look at their combined captain ability, which again is pretty similar, you know, minus two cooldown. All classes that were listed, the five classes, get a 2.25 times boost now instead, which equates to a 5.06 if you've got both of those classes on the character. Dex and quick slots are matching, and also does 100k damage to all enemies at the end of the turn. So a bit of end of turn damage, which allows you to get around resilience effects and stuff. But it would have been nice, at least in their dual form, because remember, the dual form doesn't last forever. It would have been really cool if their dual form allowed you to, you know, bypass defensive effects with their normal attacks. I think that would have been absolutely amazing. But anyway, 
anyways, let's go ahead and have a look at this character's special ability, which stage one on a three turn cooldown. That is absolutely crazy. So it says that this special can only be used two times during the quest. Okay. Sets all enemies defense to zero for one turn. Reduces fighter, slasher, striker, cerebral, and powerhouse characters special charge time by one. Allows their own normal attacks to ignore enemies defensive effects for one turn and then doubles Fighter Slasher, Striker Cerebral, and Powerhouse Characters slot effects for one turn. Okay, so the Stage 1 special is zero defense, minus one cooldown, their own attacks go through defensive effects, and a two times all boost. And they also fuse into their dual form for one turn. Okay, I like that at least on a three turn cooldown, they can still get something going on there. That's actually kind of interesting. But interestingly enough, their stage two is 14 turns. So it's a very big difference between stage one and stage two. So I would expect stage two to be pretty crazy, right? So again, you can only use it two times during the quest, which is interesting. I wonder if it means if you've got double carrot and, and Wanda, does activating one special mean that the other one can't activate their special twice in a run? If that is the case, this character is, is not good to run in, as a double version of. You definitely want to hybrid this unit with someone else, okay? But anyways, sets all enemies' defense to zero. Reduces Fighter Slasher, Striker Cerebral, and Powerhouse characters by three turns. Wow. Reduces their special charge time by three. I think that might be one of the first specials we've seen to reduce cooldowns by three with a special. Whew! Allows characters' normal attacks to ignore enemies' defensive effects for three turns. For three turns is very good. But they only make their own normal attacks, not the crews. So that kind of sucks. Boost Fighter Slasher Striker and Cerebral and Powerhouse character slot effects by 2.5 for one turn. Becomes Carrot and Wanda for three turns. And reduces the special charge time of this character by three turns. Oh, wow. So... When you use their special ability on stage 2, it gives themselves an additional minus 3 cooldown, allowing their stage 1 to be used immediately after it expires again. So, this is just my assumption. I assume that the Perospero boss fight, there's going to be a really annoying stage 4, or stage, technically it's a 3 stage fight now, so stage 2 and stage 3, and I assume Perospero is going to revive, so you have to use the special again. That's my assumption. We don't know that, but that's my assumption. Um... Man, I, I don't know. This, I don't I don't really like this character, to be honest. I really don't think this character is going to be like a god-tier unit that's going to see a lot of play in, in a lot of different teams. Because when you really boil it down, right, this character is defense down, cooldown reduction, or boost. That's basically all this character is. And you gotta remember that this captain ability is pretty difficult to team build for, especially in 2022 where some things are very specific and sometimes team building might be a little bit difficult. Uh, it does at least allow you to use powerhouse characters, which I think is a very interesting choice considering characters like this haven't really used powerhouse in the past. Very intriguing. Obviously very fast captain, but a very intriguing set of skills here. Okay. Of course, they completely evade special reverse. That's kind of nice. And they also boost base attack of Slasher and Cerebral. Okay. Now, their switch ability, which is also going to be a very important component of any dual unit coming out. Their regular switch removes their own Paralysis, Despair, and Slot Bind. Changes their own slot into matching that goes through block slots. And doubles their own attack for one turn. Okay, pretty basic switch effect. I like the fact that they give themselves a block slot. Uh, give themselves a, a matching slot through block slots. But the, 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 the actual utility of the switch is pretty bad because, yeah, as a captain, this switch is going to be great. As a sub, this switch effect sucks because it's basically only buffing their own attack and giving themselves a slot. That's all it is, which is pretty basic. At least their super switch is on a four-turn cooldown, so it's very easy to achieve. And again, the same utility, Paralysis, Despair, and Slot Bind, changes their own slot into matching, and then doubles Fighter, Slasher, Striker, Cerebral, Powerhouse characters attack for one turn. Okay, so if you use their Super Switch, you can get an attack boost for all characters. Their special is an orb boost. I get it. I understand it. It's just... I don't know, man. I don't know how I feel about this special. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about this character down below. I don't think I'm a big fan of this unit at the moment. It just seems a little bit too... This character just seems really janky. I don't really know how else to say it. This character just seems super janky. Anyways, also has pinch healing, which is pretty good. Has barry penetration. Love that. And also has hunger. What... Like, <sighs> Bro, I'm gonna go crazy. What is Bandai's obsession with giving characters hunger? It doesn't make sense. 
And we can't even get hunger tablets. I sincerely hope that we can get hunger tablets in this next treasure map because they had last last month they released Bond Clay Legend had a hunger ability, no hunger tablets. I sincerely hope there's hunger tablets in this next treasure map. Actually, and treasure map legend Crocodile, he when he came out, he's also a hunger tablet legend. Bro, what is this? What is the obsession with hunger? I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. But we're not done talking about this unit. We need to talk about their rumble abilities. Now, look, as, as I've already said, this character doesn't seem super amazing. However, their rumble abilities do seem very good. So their passive in rumble is for slasher and cerebral characters, giving them an HP buff of level five. And whenever you activate a healing effect, up to three times your cerebral characters get a recovery up and an attack up level three so it's pretty good if you are building a mono cerebral based team even in slashes it's like it's okay at least you get level five health it's not the best but it's it's usable this character is definitely built to be used with cerebral characters so if you are building a cerebral team in some some fashion this is a character you probably want to run. This is a great passive in a cerebral based team. And then you've got their special ability on a 30 CT, which is, you know, on, on the cusp of being a bit much, but you know, 30 CT is about the average for really powerful specials. It says targets slash and cerebral characters for level six speed, level six attack and level six defense for 25 seconds. Incredible. Also three enemies are targeted for 2.5 times their attack. And if this character's health is below 60%, cerebral class teammates get 3.5 times healing. It's, it's a really good special. Uh, again, I like the fact that they provide all of those buffs for your team and then they do the damage. So they're going to give themselves the level six attack buff on top of whatever else they have. And then they do the damage on top. So 2.5 times their attack, guaranteed to hit three enemies. Love that. And if they are below that 60% threshold, you get healing. So yeah, this character does seem pretty good, especially when you have like their behavior pattern of two of their behavior patterns are healing, meaning that with their passive, you know, after one cycle, they're going to have level six attack up, level six recovery up. And remember, after every healing, they're going to give themselves that recovery up buff, which means that the healing from their special is going to be enhanced. So it makes a lot of sense. I understand why they built the character this way. Um, completely evades special bind and reduces damage from free spirit characters by 30%. Interesting little effect there. But at this point in time, I don't know how a cerebral team is even built in PvP. I'd have to probably do a little bit of research on that one. But interestingly enough, this character is going to be pretty good, especially if more cerebral characters come out in the future. So we actually have some other additional information regarding the characters that are coming out in this point in time, uh, regarding the actual free-to-play treasure map character, which is going to be Pera Sparrow. So Pera Sparrow's captain ability, shout out to Koala-san, by the way, for these translations, boosts striker cerebral characters attack by 3x, and then also reduces damage taken by 10%. And if you use his special ability, then the captain ability for the next three turns is a four times captain and a 20% damage reduction. Very good free to play captain there. And his special allows you to get a 2.75 times chain lock for three turns, lock your slots for three turns. And if you got a quick captain, he does 350 times his attack in quick damage to all enemies for two turns at the end of the turn, allowing you to get around resilience, allowing you to get a chain multiplier. So that's, it's good. I think it's a very, very good special, good captain for a free to play unit. It. And then his Sailor effect gets a quick slot carried over if you hit a perfect and reduces cooldown by one every time another striker or a cerebral uses their special. That's really good, actually. And also with his potential abilities, he does have cooldown reduction, reducing his cooldown by 11 turns at the start of the quest, meaning he's always going to be ready when you start the quest. And a support is that if you use a special, he locks your striker character slots for one turn and then it's, it just supports any striker character. Like this unit is probably one of the better... Um, um, TM units that we've had in a while probably on like probably one of the best treasure map units since like Shiryu right or since the Onigashima Luffy this guy is actually incredible and he's going to see a lot of play not only as a free-to-play captain for you know people that don't have many units really good special ability but also a great support effect so I'm a big fan of this Paris Sparrow so with all that being said that is going to wrap up today's video thank you very much for watching and if you guys did enjoy the video make sure to go ahead and leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content that I post in including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.